You know, the 1980s and 90s were really the second golden age of bad movies, in my opinion, my humble opinion. The 50s really kind of solidified the B-movie genre all on its own. There were bad movies before that, but the the subsection of B movies really is kind of a 40s and 50s invention with some of the better ones in the 50s. But the, the 80s and 90s really kind of became that second golden age, like the, the comic book said, the silver age, where they reinvented the genre. Well, I think uh, the mid to late 80s was kind of that, you know, all the way up through about the mid 90s for cinema. And today I wanted to talk to you about a particular movie that really kind of embodies that whole second golden age of uh, bad movie or B movies rather. And that of course is a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. Hello again and welcome back to bad movie review. Now nymphoid barbarian gets really strong reactions quite frequently. And um, honestly for a 1990 film, I think a lot of the criticism is really unfounded. Um, there's a lot of really vitriolic things said about this movie, but I don't see it personally. It's only like 82 minutes. I mean, this is not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination, but when you see the label trauma on a movie, you know, you're getting something that's kind of special. It sits in a different class than other movies. It's not designed to be some super serious, you know, intense pelican brief type thriller or crime procedural or something like that. No, it's about fun. Trauma is a label that equals cinematic fun. That's how I've always seen it because I've never seen their movies any other way. Now, as usual, I took notes because I just watched the movie. And my notes are a giant mass, like always. So I might be bouncing around a little more than usual today. Now, what I want you to picture is the plot. Because it's very thin. <laughs> you may have to really look for it. Uh, the basic premise is in the future. Um, during some sort of new barbarian age. Um, Troma and the rest of the, Tromaville and the rest of the world lies in ruins is a heap of rubble. And it is here where the nubile Leah, played by Linda Corwin, must survive the evil Klon and his minions. Yeah, so... that The opening of this movie has some voiceover narration. I don't know whose voice is. I, I suspect it may not be Linda Corwin's. Uh, I, I think this was added later. Um, this would have been fine as a standalone, like, fantasy movie, but, uh, it takes place in a nebulous future with, I don't know, some sort of after a a nuclear apocalypse or something. It's very vague, but the opening narration kind of gives you an idea that the world ended and there's a shot of, like, New York City and you can see the Twin Towers there. Um, and the world's destroyed or whatever. And then there's some sort of rebellion or whatever. And then it goes on to say how her juices get flowing or something. And it's really gross and creepy, but none of that had anything to do with the damn movie I watched. And honestly, I think it hurt this film because it sets up some very unrealistic expectations and it, it didn't add much of anything to it. It could have been just a general post-apocalypse film or a straight fantasy film. Instead, now they're kind of like giving the audience this perception that this is what's happening. And it, you don't really, it's none of that is really addressed. Um, if uh, now civilization ended when the lead character, Leah was a, a very young girl, right? So it was, she looks like she's about 20 in the movie, maybe even like 18 or 19. I'm not sure. There's not a lot of information on Linda Corwin. This was apparently her only movie, which I'm actually disappointed by. Um, 
so you, about 20 years have gone by and that's it. So where are all the ruins? I understand that nature has a habit of creeping in. We've all seen Life After People on History Channel. I think, or A&E or whatever. But it's only been 20 years. Where's all the ruins? You see like a handful of them. And I'm pretty sure those were just abandoned buildings. But if they were anywhere near a city, because this was supposed to be somewhere near Troma, where Tromaville used to be, where are all the city ruins? Because Troma's supposed to be kind of part of New York or in that general vicinity. So where's the ruins of one of the largest cities in the United States? That doesn't make any sense to me. So either it, that section of the movie was tacked on later in post, or it was, uh, or they just got lazy with the whole thing, which I think it was tacked on later. And I'm pretty sure there's some clips from Troma's War added in there too, or some similar movie that is a different movie entirely, because it doesn't fit with anything in this movie. And when you see the credits, none of those people are credited. So I find it very weird that that entire opening section was even there. I think that I'm convinced that was added later. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, I'm dragging on a bit. Um, the opening narration was awful. Um, the, as far as like the acting goes, there's barely any dialogue. It's a very quiet film. And that's fine. It actually kind of works for it because, you know, if you're in the barbarian times... Uh, you can get by with not talking a lot so the mutants don't come eat you or whatever. And there's like these lizard mutant guys or whatever. Fine. I thought that actually worked. Um, according to uh, the internet, there's somebody said that it would sell better overseas that way. But I don't know. Um, the special effects were special, all right. Uh, there was poor matting. You could see vis visual visible edge lines where they didn't do a real good job matting it and uh the claymation had a real 70s feel like it was nice to see claymation from a 1990 movie i guess but uh because i'm a f fan of ray harryhausen but it it looked a little dated and it wasn't always matted properly so they put a lot of effort into that i'll give them credit for that um they actually didn't do a bad job it was Kind of middle of the road. I've seen worse claymation, but it had a real kind of like HR puffin stuff sort of feel. Like that real 70s feel to it. So I don't know about that, but it wasn't bad. I've seen way worse. Um, the costumes looked really good. Uh, especially for... Um, uh, um, I don't remember what I wrote there. But the costumes looked good. Uh, the, the helmets look cool. Klon looked pretty cool with his bad guy armor with the skull thing. And yeah, overall I was, I was pretty happy with the costuming. Um, the, uh, oh, you, if you notice when you're watching the movie, um, when two lizards are wrestling on the beach, the lizard men, uh, <laughs> you could get a brief shot of the one's underwear. <laughs> Because the back of his uh, sewn together burlap sack shirt thing comes up and you get a shot of the waistband of his underwear. I thought that was funny. And there's another shot where um, Klon and uh, Marn are fighting for the first time. And you can... <laughs> you get a, uh, a brief shot of the cameraman's shadow because the sun's behind him. And uh, it was clearly filmed with a handheld camera, which is fine. It, I mean, the quality of the film wasn't bad. I've seen more recent films that look way worse, but it was always sunny when they filmed it, which worked pretty well. And if this takes place in the dark future, where mankind's been wiped out, why did nobody call on Thundar the Barbarian? I mean, he has a sorceress girlfriend, and he's got Ookla the Mock. So all they had to do was round those guys up and go form a rescue mission. Nope. Nope, this guy's got to do it on his own to save his girlfriend, and a bunch of other people get killed. Um, there's one boob shot in this film, by the way. So you get to see Linda Corwin's pretty little boobies. Um, and, you know, I had when I first saw this movie back in the 90s, I had a total crush on her. And you know what? Now I can see why. Because she's, she's really hot. Alright, my perversions aside... The swamp monster looked pretty cool too. 
Um, I was really impressed with that costume. I thought they did a real good job. The dubbing probably could have used some work. You know, the, the, the tracking wasn't always quite right. But I think that was more inexperienced than anything else. Um, I did like the sword fight between Klon and the Masked Stranger. I thought that was actually pretty impressive. Um, considering how amazingly low budget this movie was. Uh, it wasn't bad. And, uh, you know, overall, uh, oh, there, there was a river in there that's got these two giant monsters in it. It reminded me of the Willy Wonka chocolate river. So the fact that it was at the castle made me think it was the Willy Wonka factory. And I couldn't get that image out of my head. So I kept waiting for Oompa Loompas to show up. And I know that's, that's really weird to say, but I couldn't get that imagery out of my head. But overall, I actually kind of liked this movie. Um, yeah, it's not the best movie, but it's far from the worst movie I've ever seen. It's not a very well-paced movie overall, but wasn't entirely bored with it or anything. It was, it's cheesy enough. You could probably rag on it, but honestly, for like a barbarian film, it's way better than that Ringo Starr mess. Uh, what was that? 1 million BC or something. That was a terrible, terrible movie. Never rent that. It was, it was horrible. I don't know what drugs people are on when that movie was made, but don't see that one. Watch this one instead. The title is intentionally misleading, I think, because uh, it's catchy. Nymphoid Barbarian and Dinosaur Hell. It'd be more apt to say um, Hot Chick Running Away from Lizard Men and Their Pervy Master. That would have been a little bit more realistic, but... You know, it had giant fantasy type monsters that are supposed to be like mutations or whatever. And it had these lizard men guys that are supposed to be mutants. Whatever, that that didn't bother me at all. I think the title actually is genius because you're like, oh, a nymphoid barbarian in dinosaur hell. The, that's catchy as all get out. That's genius. So, yeah, I think the title actually is a big selling point. But I actually thought the movie was okay. It's it's obviously a B movie. It's incredibly low budget. Uh, I think I read it was forty grand budget, which is pretty pretty low budget, and it's almost entirely outside. Um, the sets look good when they were inside. I thought they did a good job on that, but uh, there's only a few shots inside of a building, and they're very quick, and they're in very limited re areas that you know they probably only had access to a few rooms or whatever, but. Yeah, I, I really don't see why people hate on this movie the way they do. If they think this movie's awful, they need to rent uh, Vampires and Other Stereotypes or Demon Under Glass and let the suffering begin because this movie is nowhere near on the level of that bad. It's just kind of a mid-range B movie, and you know what? I actually would recommend it. Uh, if you like barbarian movies, it, it especially B movies like Age of the Hobbits or... Um, well, pretty much anything with barbarians. Uh, it, it's just, you know, primitive people fighting. It, it's not Apocalypto or anything, but it's not a bad film. And uh, if you like B-movies, this is a solid B-movie. It's it's cheesy. It's like a whole wheel of cheese. You know, it's got a little something for everyone. It's got weird monsters, cheesy costumes, but it's not bad. And I don't really see the hate. It's just kind of a middle-of-the-road B-movie. So it's, if you read the reviews, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Cause these are probably people that have never seen a B movie before. And they were just taken in by the title and expected something that was totally unrealistic to expect. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to have uh, weird dreams tonight about Oompa Loompas chasing a barbarian th girl through a, a river of chocolate because that's how I roll. Um, so yeah, this was kind of middle of the road. I recommend it because Linda Corwin's hot and, um, it does have a cool f sword fight scene with the, the bad guy and, um, the masked stranger who has an ax, but it was a pretty cool scene. And, um, yeah, you get to see a girl, hot girl running around in her bikini for 80 minutes. <laughs> Boo hoo. Yeah, um, solid stuff overall. I, I think it was a solid B movie. It's one of the classics, and it's a Troma production. 
surprisingly very little gore. Almost none, in fact. There, it was just a few scenes of, you know, blood and whatnot here and there. But, you know, pretty tame movie. Um, really not what everybody seems to say about how awful it is. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that some of these guys didn't do work later. They just seem to... Most people in this seem to have just made this movie. And it's not nearly as bad as everybody says. So we're going to leave it there because I've rambled long enough. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Bad Movie Review. Thanks for listening.